Florida is a weird and wonderful place full of weird and wonderful creatures. But Florida's ecosystem is not as stable as it used to be. Famously, Florida has had lots of issues with invasive species, and in some places they have completely taken over. This has led to many native species suffering, and it's resulted in millions of dollars of damage. Florida's unique climate is one of the many reasons why it has problems with invasive species, as this means that many subtropical and tropical creatures can live here. Whether you look in the skies, in the water, or on land, you will find invasive species. But strangely, Florida's situation could be even worse. There are plenty of South American creatures that could do very well in Florida, and some South American creatures could decimate the ecosystem. In this video, I will be going through just a few of these creatures, and we'll start off with one very famous big cat. The jaguar is the only living member in its genus, and it's native to both South America and North America. It is the largest cat in the Americas, and it's the third largest cat in the world. One of the reasons why the jaguar is so successful across its range is the fact that it's so adaptable. It will hunt anything from large mammals to turtles, and even large snakes, birds, and caiman. It's able to take down these large prey items mostly due down to its powerful bite, as they're known to bite directly through the skull and then deliver a fatal blow to the brain. Even though the jaguar is arguably best well known as a South American animal, it's found over large parts of Central America, Mexico, and even a small area of the southwestern United States. This shows us that they will be able to survive in Florida's climate, and they'll even be able to deal with Florida's wetland ecosystems. Not only are these cats excellent swimmers, but they're also masters of wetland ecosystems. One area where the jaguar reigns supreme is the Pantanal, and the Pantanal is a region encompassing the world's largest tropical wetland area and the world's largest flooded grasslands. The Pantanal is very similar to Florida's Everglades, but of course there are different creatures roaming these areas. You can find tapirs, capybaras, marsh deer and caiman roaming the Pantanal, and the jaguar will prey on all of these species. The fauna in the Everglades is of course very different to the fauna in the Pantanal, but there are quite a few species in the Everglades that the jaguar could prey on. Famously, jaguars are very good at hunting crocodilians, and they'd be able to take down small to medium-sized alligators. As well as this, they could also help with some of the invasive species, such as the giant invasive snakes. In South America, jaguars will prey on anacondas, so really the Burmese python should be easier to take down. As well as this, they would be able to hunt many of Florida's native mammals, and really there would be nothing in their way apart from man. Luckily, there's not really a feasible way that this can happen, and hopefully the jaguar will stay out of Florida for many years to come. The next South American creature we will be taking a look at is the arapaima. The arapaima is one of the largest freshwater fish in the world, with a maximum length of around 3 meters. They are native to the freshwaters of South America, and they are quite a hardy species. Even though their numbers have declined over the years thanks to overfishing, the arapaima has quite a strong defense. Their scales are very large and thick, and they are equipped with a very rigid bony skull. This means that it's very hard for predators to take them down, and this is one of the many reasons why they've been around mostly unchanged for 23 million years. The arapaima is a predator and mostly feeds on other fish in its ecosystem. Even though it is a very large fish, it doesn't need a lot of space to live, as it has the ability to breathe atmospheric oxygen. This ability allows it to thrive in waters that are slow moving or even stagnant, and this is one of the many reasons why they're such an adaptable species. Unfortunately for the smaller creatures of the Amazon basin, the arapaima doesn't only limit itself to fish. It will feed on any birds or mammals that enter the water, but it will also feed on fruit, seeds and insects. Of course, this giant fish does still have some natural predators, but only a few large predators in Florida would be able to tackle them. Strangely, the arapaima is already considered an invasive species, as there are a few invasive populations in South and Southeast Asia. After the famous floods in 2018, some of these fish escaped from aquaculture ponds in Kerala, and some of them have been causing problems in the area. 
This same situation could happen in Florida, and the arapaima would have plenty of fish to prey on. Florida has become such a hub for invasive species that the arapaima could prey on the same fish that it does in South America in Florida. There are plenty of South American fish that are invasive in Florida, and the arapaima would be more than happy to prey on them. The alligator would be one of the few large predators standing in their way, but they would also be targeted by birds of prey and marine predators that head into brackish and fresh waters. Despite the threat of these potential predators, I still think they would be successful, and this is mostly due down to the fact that so many invasive fish have been successful in Florida. Unfortunately, unlike the jaguar, this could possibly happen, as many non-native fish enter Florida's ecosystem through the pet trade. I really do hope this introduction never happens, as it would be very hard to remove them. The final South American creature we will be taking a look at is the giant otter. The giant otter is the longest member of the weasel family, as it can reach a length of up to 1.8 meters. These semi-aquatic creatures are extremely social, and they are usually found in family groups supporting 3 to 8 members. Communication is key in these groups, and these otters are known for being very loud. These otters are found across many large rivers in northern South America, and in these waters they are very efficient predators. They mostly feed on fish in the form of tetras and catfish, but they will also tackle crabs, turtles, snakes, and even small caiman. Across their native range, they compete with other species such as neotropical otters and crocodilian species, but by working as a group, they can overcome these rivals. Personally, I think the giant otters would do very well in Florida's wetlands, and they would be able to help with one very large problem. Overall, the giant otters would have a negative impact on the Floridian ecosystem, but they would help to control a few pests. Some of Florida's worst invasive fish are plecos, and giant otters are very fond of preying on these fish. Some predators leave plecos alone as they have very bony bodies, but these otters are more than happy to chow down on them. As well as this, they will also prey on many of the other invasive fish in Florida, but of course they would also prey on some of the native species as well. Giant otters would also target the invasive snakes, but alligators and the Florida panther could keep their numbers in check. Thankfully, once again, this introduction is very unlikely to happen, as the native fish and aquatic life would suffer. These animals have all the skills needed to take over the Everglades, but luckily for now, they're staying put. If you think there are any other South American creatures that would do well in Florida, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.